What's up, everybody? Welcome back into another edition of SSPN. Thanks for being patient with us. I had a wedding. I was I was out of town for a week. I went I went tango on you, Ethan. I just ghosted everybody. <laughs> it's all good. We we completely understand here at SSPN. That yes, that's that's a great way to put it, Ethan. That's mm. the values, understanding. And you know what we're gonna understand today, Ethan? What's that? How many games? Victor Wembanyama could potentially play next season, Ethan. This is going to be one of the most, you know, hot topics throughout the rest of the offseason, especially, you know, once the draft actually happens and, you know, he gets in the Spurs facilities and there's some, you know, uh, initial evaluations, some initial workouts. You know, I, I saw something else about maybe the chance of him playing summer league is a little bit more. Um, I think all of these things kind of factor in to how many games he potentially plays next season, because if he ends up playing, I mean, if he ends up playing Summer League and FIBA, that could definitely have an impact on how they manage him in the season if he's playing both of those. But then also, you know, the flip side of that, Easton, is if he's wanting to do both of those, maybe he, you know, that's kind of his mentality. And we'll dive a little bit more into that in today's episode. But uh, that was kind of my little intro just on my thoughts on this topic, Ethan. What are yours? Well, you know, it's kind of a crapshoot. <laughs> like it's a, absolutely there's like evidence as far as how other players have been treated in the past, and kind of how superstars are kind of catered to with with load management nowadays. Will he play back to backs? That sort of thing. Um, so any number we say is, is pretty arbitrary, but I think at the same time, like it might it'll probably be pretty accurate by the time the season's all said and done. Um, and speaking to FIBA and summer league, I think FIBA is a definite. I think he will will be doing that. At all signs point to him wanting to play for his country. And the Spurs are a, fr- a franchise that, um, that that welcomes those kind of guys. They let Tony do it, Manu do it, uh, mm-hmm. pretty much everybody. So summer league, that I think is less likely. Um, we didn't do we didn't let Jeremy Sohan do it. And I know Jeremy was injured quote unquote. I don't right. really know if he was. Um, but I, I just don't think there's a necessary. Like, why would he play? Like, the, the competition level won't be enough to, get, I guess, prepare him for what is coming in, in the NBA season. I don't know if that makes sense at all. But, like, there's no, to me, there's no benefit from having him play those games other than potentially hurting himself. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, Ethan. But the reason that I guess I brought that up and I kind of alluded to um, the idea of, of Victor, you know, maybe potentially playing in summer league is because of this Google search screen that I'm about to show you here in a second. Um, because I, I can, first of all, I, I would like to say I completely agree with you. I would rather just sit him out. Like there's, there's no point of him getting injured, especially when you consider that not to say that, I mean, not to crap on the quality of the NBA summer league, cause it's still a really good league for guys, you know, just trying to get showcased even to get into, you know, other leagues around the world, whether that's the NBL, the Euro league, yeah. you know, whatever it may be. But at the same time, I really don't feel like there's that giant of a gap between uh, the French league that he's playing in right now and the summer league. You know what I mean? Like, is the is the quality of competition, you know, is there really that big of a jump? I mean, really, from watching it, it seems like to me it might be a little bit even higher. Um, So, you know, obviously there's just a lot more young players in summer league where there's a lot more, you know, vets and, 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 you know, guys who play a little bit more physical, I guess you could say. And it's like a regular season, like the summer league is just, you know, the summer league. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that when it comes to FIBA and the French league, I really don't see not only just with the injury factor, but just in the sense of him getting better, I, I don't see the benefit of it. But Ethan, the NBA wants their money. They want it bad. Um, And that's why I'm showing you this Google screen right here in a second. When I Google Victor Wembanyama summer, I don't even I don't even finish summer league. The first three things that come up, NBA says it won't mind if Victor Wembanyama's summer league debut comes in Sacramento, not Las Vegas. I'm sure that has to do with the other games he's playing. Victor Wembanyama playing in the NBA Summer League after draft, discussed by Adam Silver. Obviously, that's a Bleacher Report headline. You know, that doesn't mean that he's playing. And then here's Sports Illustrated, should the Spurs play Victor Wembanyama at the Summer League. But, I mean, on NBA.com five days ago, the Spurs and probably Wembanyama, and you know they want to make that money, dude. Like, that's it's going to be like Zion's debut, but maybe potentially bigger. Like, do you remember how big of a deal that was? It was a huge deal. And if I'm not mistaken, he only played the one game. Yeah. So if it really comes down to the NBA kind of forcing the Spurs, it would just be him, one. Just play him a game and then I'd love it. Out. Like yeah, I mean, for the hype of it, and I guess a benefit that we didn't really touch on is 
he'll be running the Spurs offense, and it's kind of a familiarity thing. That could and be if better. Blake's in there too, I forget about that. Yeah, the yeah. other two draft picks we could potentially have as well, building True. some chemistry. Exactly. So there's there's that benefit that's kind of intangible, but at the end of the day, I, I just don't see the Spurs doing it, Jude. I just the, the way that we run our team. Yeah, it seems very unlikely. Yeah, and, and when it comes to all of the preparation that Victor Wembanyama puts into his game, yeah. you know, or, or, or his um, not a, well, obviously he puts his a lot game, of preparation into his, his game, but excuse me, his preparation into um, his warm up routine and and his mobility exercises prior to to playing, just his whole warm up for his body, being seven foot four, having an eight foot wingspan. There's a whole thing, like a whole. Um, routine that he goes through where he walks on his fingertips and his toes. You know, he balances himself on tennis balls. Y- if you Google it on YouTube, you can see it. Y- y- all, a lot of y'all watching probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but the point is, is that that's the reason why this is such a big question. Because of his frame, you know, if we really want to go the negative route, you can talk about Chet Holmgren from last year who has a similar frame and then we saw him get hurt just practicing before summer league. Um, obviously, was it, that's what it was, right? Yeah, yeah. He was in a pickup game with, with some other NBA players and LeBron. And LeBron oh, had a fast break, and he was the gosh. only one in transition. And LeBron just went for like a like a like a physical layup. Like it wasn't even that <laughs> that much strength. And the poor poor dude just got he got hit a little too hard. And that's the reason, you know, because of things like that. That's why yeah. there's this giant conversation about. You know, how many games will he play? The biggest question mark potentially is whenever it comes to, you know, all of the crazy highlights we've seen from him, the one negative this whole time has been, okay, but can we sustain it? Now, granted, Ethan, we were talking about this beforehand, and it really feels like he's put in um, the most preparation, like, on his body whenever it comes to just having longevity at, at such a young age. Yeah, and we were talking about LeBron, and LeBron's a completely different player, completely different body and everything like that. But he and Kobe Bryant were, when they were 19 years old, I don't think that they were putting this much time and energy into not working on their game, but just like preparing his body for what it was to what is to come. And I think we, we saw in the article, he has a 90-minute warm-up before practice even starts. Um, and that involves stretching, that involves a light lift, the tennis ball routine that we talked about really just preparing his joints, his ankles, his knees, you know, all the injury fears, all the mm-hmm. body that are always feared of being hurt, strengthening those to avoid injury. And that's been almost more important than actually working on his basketball game. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, um, while the quality of athlete you know, and, and there may be more physical specimens, you know, is yeah. definitely at a different level in the NBA when it comes to just the style of defense, um, you know, how much you're able to get your hands in guys. We've talked about this at nauseum so many times, Ethan. The yep. point is, is you're allowed to be a little bit more physical across European basketball, whether it's the French league, you know, uh, the British league or the, I know that may sound crazy. There is a British league and the Euro league, what, whatever league that they're playing in, it's just a more physical game over the, Pacific Ocean? No, that's the Atlantic. Atlantic. Yeah, I can't believe myself right now. You know, anyway, I know that. I only know that. Dude. I only know I that that's know the that. Atlantic Ocean because of cloudy with a chance of meatballs. I lived in Florida, bro. Like, I've been in the Atlantic. <laughs> I've been to California. Anyways, it's okay. We we are on a basketball show. I no one's gonna judge you. For it's not that. geography. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just you know when I think about Wimbenyama, I just forget. I forget maps. You know what I mean? Forget how they yeah. work. But. Victor Wembenyama's trainer is a man from France as well. His name is Guillemain Alkir, and he's someone right here. Here's the caption for this photo. There's a possibility that Alkir will come to San Antonio with Victor Wembenyama in some capacity. I'm pretty sure he's worked with um, other Olympic athletes, um, a lot of other French athletes, um, and he's kind of the architect but behind his whole routine. So obviously, Ethan was talking about the strengthening of his joints all that type of stuff. But here's just another quote whenever it comes to um, the uniqueness of the exercises, if you will. Alkir tailors their exercises to work on weaknesses, but also with the holistic approach that uses recovery time to drill hand-eye coordination and vision in between sets. So it's not even just that they're working with like, you know, his joints and all that stuff. They're also working on hand-eye coordination and, Mm. you know, stuff like that and just like reaction time and stuff like that. 
Alkir adapts the plan intensity as well as which drills around how Wembenyama is feeling that day. And another key quote, and this is something he's also talked about, you know, he talked about his two players that he kind of, you know, um, and this was after the G League Ignite press conference that he's, he's models his game after right now. He says he doesn't want to be anybody, but he says it's KD and Giannis. And, you know, he really views his body in a similar light to Giannis's physical development in the NBA. Maybe he's, I don't really think he's ever going to be as muscular as Giannis just because of how tall he is like and how like like it's just with his frame like i just don't know if it's ever gonna get that um big and i don't also know if he want it to but i know that he's also talked about how he wants to still get bigger and he wants to kind of follow that path each year just add on a little bit more a little bit more until it's fully filled out and as alkir says his body is not finished so the principal part of my work is to adapt to this so Mm. I mean, once again, we could go into all the stuff you're talking about. He prefers much of the body work to be barefoot. I mean, there's a whole thing. Y'all can go to this ESPN article, the man behind keeping the seven foot five Victor Wembanyama healthy. This is this is the whole thing surrounding this question, as we've said throughout the show. And it's just, yeah, I don't think it's going to guarantee anything, Ethan. I think we're still going to have to manage how many games he plays. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just um, what's the word? spill the beans here me and you both probably think that it's still gonna be 50 to 60 games and that's probably like a positive thing i mean i don't know maybe that's not a conservative thing to say but that i said positive there i meant conservative um or or something that would be positive in the light of the spurs but you know there's they're doing everything they can ethan yeah, and there's no there's no sense in rushing it. I agree with you. Fifty to sixty games to me would be huge. Like that's insanely right. good. Because what did Embiid have? Like nineteen games his rookie year, something like that. Like, yeah, not even didn't even get close to thirty. Let's put a high ceiling on that. So if he can get to that fifty or sixty mark, we're really seeing how he can flourish with the other guys on the team. We're really seeing how his body is holding up. Pop is able to get a glimpse into his future is to see like what position is he going to play and you know where he likes the ball. So many things that we can figure out in 50 to 60 games. We don't necessarily need him to be there for 82. Mm-hmm. Um, let's take it slow. Let's not let's 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 not rush this because we're not going to win if he plays 82 games or zero right. games. Like we're still not going to be championship contenders. Um, so there's no sense in re- overdoing it. Um, what you were talking about with that hand-eye coordination thing. That's something I never even thought about, but that's huge. Like, how many bigs do we know that have the worst hand-eye coordination and are just so clumsy with either yeah. getting the ball in yeah. the post or like slapping at like picking? That probably the has ball. a lot to do with his ball handling and how he's been able to progress. You know, with his dribble moves. I mean, do yeah. the insane stuff that he does at his size and perimeter defense too. Like being able to yep. swipe the ball or play the passing lanes. Like that. That's huge and something I never thought about. Um, but I was watching one of his games last week. Mm-hmm. Or I was listening to it because I was working. Knock on wood. No one, I hope, <laughs> I hope no one from the office is, is, is watching this podcast. But, um, uh, and they, the commentator said that someone in his camp wanted his body to eventually look like David Robinson's. And I was like, that's jacked. <laughs> like, like David Robinson. Why do they keep skinny. making the Spurs references? They just, oh, they wanted just it the whole head. time. They wanted yeah, it the whole time. Apparently. Um, <laughs> But that's something to keep your eye on. I mean, David was that's extremely so- skinny. Like, that is true. He was very, very skinny when he was young at, at Navy. Like, look, mm-hmm. I don't think he was, I think he was 6'8 or 6'9 when he got to Navy. <laughs> it's just hard for me to see that comparison. Yeah, it's a little strange. Especially like, since- like, you want him to put on, like, 60 pounds? Like, that's what I'm I know, I know. He's, I know his weight is, like, like he's 230 pounds right now, but he he's still stick thin. Like that's yeah. very different than 230 pounds, even on David Robinson. So yeah. like, that's what, like if they really wanted to get an equivalent of David's frame, that's what I meant by like getting 60 pounds. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, cause that's what they were saying. Like, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I don't that's know. Just a, I mean, I like the Spurs reference. Yeah. That's basically all I said it for was for the Spurs <laughs> reference. I don't think it's genuine. Yeah. Well, and it could just be, you know, if it's just somebody in his camp, I mean, his camp could be, that could be somebody in his family and they could just, and that could just be like them saying, oh, we want him to get muscular, their way of saying it. And because they know he's going to the Spurs, like, yeah, yeah, honestly, maybe Timmy's a better, 
like maybe you know and, and that's a really good thing to bring up here ethan just in the context of all this you know as we all know timmy had the knee brace he didn't have it at the beginning of his career but he had it you know in the latter half of his career and that was something that he had to manage he kind of always had knee issues and the spurs you know were real quiet about it but you know that's kind of why the load management stuff as much as we give Kawhi crap for it now yeah. you know the spurs kind of started that and it that's had true. to do with timmy you know, and obviously we've talked about the similarities, not necessarily in the game, but um, obviously there are still some post similarities, you could say. But Victor Wembanyama and Tim Duncan are still very different prospects, but they're the same in that they're the consensus number one guys. And they had to manage his injuries. They had to manage his health throughout his career. Um, so they have experience with that. So that's kind of another positive whenever it comes to you know, just the future of how many games he's going to play in this season and the seasons moving forward. It's that the Spurs do have experience with this with a prospect of his caliber. Something we'll have to live with. I really don't have anything else to add. (laughs) It's a good thing, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, the only other thing that I could think of, Ethan, that I also want to mention in this episode is there was also a comment from... Victor's agent after the G League Ignite game when there was a lot of smoke talking about potentially shutting him down for the whole season because of, you know, just obviously after seeing the 37 and 36 points, if Victor shut it down, he would have still been the number one pick. And this is just a little bit of commentary on Victor's mentality. This isn't a quote from him. This is a quote from his agent, but it says NBA people are telling me to shut him down and we're not going to shut him down. If we came with that kind of talk to Victor, he will look at us and say, what are you talking about? He'll never agree to that. He wants to compete and get better. With Victor, it's basketball first and everything second. He was so pissed off that he lost. Now, obviously, you've got to say that stuff as an agent because you want to hype up your guy. But I think the key around that also is that he's not somebody who really wants to hide. Like he wants to go out and compete and play with these guys. You know, they're in the finals right now. He's played every game in the playoffs, Ethan. And while it is only 34 games in the French League, he played every game this season. So those are the positives that you could say whenever it comes to the counter arguments to, you know, maybe him getting up into that 60, maybe closer to 70 game range. But I still feel like just with the scenario of the season, like the Spurs are the Spurs are at best would be like a 38 and 44 play in team. And that would be like best case scenario, you get the you get the 10 seed. But I don't even think that the Spurs are necessarily going to get there because I don't gonna don't think they're gonna play him that much. We're not gonna rush this, like you said, Ethan. There's no reason to just throw him out there and play him 82 games a season and just give him, you know, all the workload and then he gets hurt. And then what do you have? This is the most prized possession potentially in NBA history. And the Spurs are one of the most cautious organizations in NBA history. So we wanted to give you guys a lot of context in this one, but really at the end of the day, all the signs are pointing to the Spurs handling this as conservatively as possible. I mean, I could really, this may sound crazy, Ethan, and maybe I'll look like an idiot here, you know, next year when we're sitting down talking. But I mean, I could even see a scenario where he plays like, this would be the least that I would think, but like 35 games or something. Because you just you just never know how you're going to manage it. And, and especially if there's some... I mean, we saw how they managed the guys this year. And as much as Wembenyama is an incredible talent, I just don't think we're, we're a playoff team yet. So, Yeah, it would suck as a fan, but I would, I would understand. But it yeah. would suck as a fan. It would really suck as a fan. And I don't think it's going to be that low, but I just feel like that's like that that that's a realistic thing to say yeah, just because of how much work they put into it. And also that he's adjusting as much as I was just talking about how he's played every game, you know, in the playoffs in the regular season, that total amount is still going to be like 30 games less than an NBA regular season. You know what I mean? And then on top of that, you would still have the playoffs after that where the series are much longer because in the French league, the first round is three, three games. The second round is five games. And then the finals is seven games. And you know, in the NBA, every series is seven games. So it, it's going to be an adjustment for him for sure. Um, but if I had to just make a prediction right now, like I said, I, I would say probably in that 50 game range. I hope it's in that 50 game range, dude, because last side note for Ethan here, I think <laughs> his, his kind, like, nice kid you know big smile like oh i'm just happy to be here 
I think that might be an act. I think this dude's a dog. I think oh, this yeah. guy, I mean, he's physical. He is vocal. He like Even if he's getting beaten down in the post by a bigger, stronger defender, he doesn't back down. He attacks that guy. He goes up for blocks. Like He's not scared of anybody. He wants to play, man. He wants to play. So I think him with Sohan, with Big Body, with Devin, like that's just <laughs> Zach off the bench. Like That's just like a dog lineup. And I'd love to see for as many games as possible. Um, us kind of build that identity around him. Absolutely. You know, there's another YouTube video. If you just look up, you know, how many games Victor Wembanyama will play, it's an ESPN video from right after that G League Ignite game. And they were talking about some of the stuff that he was saying to them in, in not in the press conference, but in like interviews with reporters. So, you know, it wasn't like massly out there, but he was just like, you know, I want to play in these games because I think about what Kobe would do. Like, Ooh. would Kobe, you know, like, not want to play in these just because, oh, you know, my body, all this stuff. Like, mm -hmm. so I, once again, I don't really think that that has an impact on it because I think that the Spurs are going to protect their prize possession. But I think that that's a great point because he really, I think he has that dog in him for sure. And we've seen it a little bit in the French league. And I think we're going to, you know, see it come out even more once he gets on those big bright lights in San Antonio, that's right, baby, Alamo city. We're back on ESPN. You know, he can probably step over the wall of the Alamo without even jumping. Dude, I went to the Alamo this weekend, actually. Really? Yeah. Is that your first I, time at the Alamo? No, no, no. Okay, no. make no, sure. It was, it was my girlfriend's first time, which was crazy. I was like, you've lived in Texas. You grew up in Texas. You haven't been to the Alamo. But, you know, I was just in there, and I was just, I was just feeling his energy, and I was like, this is Victor's Alamo. This is his city. He's got to get a... Uh... What's David Crockett? Yes, yes, he's got to get the Davy Crockett hat. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> some boots and some Wranglers, dude. Oh. We need we need Victor at the Alamo soon. I'm I'm so pumped, bro. Like I, I was know. thinking about the season earlier. We're in the city, like, dog. Yeah. June 22nd, mark your calendars. Yes, yes. more stuff coming for yes. you guys. Get ready. It's draft. The draft is like 17 days away now. So mm -hmm. the Wemby countdown continues. Me and Ethan have also got some other ideas coming out. You know, just before the draft happens and before free agency, we're going to do our offseason position breakdowns to just kind of set the stage. Who's on contract? You know, who's a restricted free agent? Who's an unrestricted free agent? And just kind of set the stage for the offseason for each position. So thanks for hanging out with us today. I know I might have talked a lot in roundabouts today, but that's no. just because... Uh, the nature of kind of this conversation, but this is a big talking point. So we wanted to address it with y'all and please tell us what you think in the comments below about Wemby's longevity, you know, what you think of his routine and, and what your predictions of how many games you think he's going to play. And if you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe below. We're going to be back with all that good stuff coming soon and to stay updated with it, follow on Twitter at SSPN on YT at Jude McLaren and at Ethan underscore Quintero. We appreciate y'all. Go Spurs go. It's Wimby season. We'll catch y'all later.